Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me in both ears, by the way, uh, now that hopefully uh, I've fixed the audio gremlins. OK, on to Russell Brand again. He's been dropped by his management agency along with Paramount and Netflix, and he's been demonetized by YouTube. Well, you know, fair enough. These are non-governmental entities and they can do whatever they like. Uh, but is it really a case of doing as they please, or have they been leaned on uh, by the government? And is the government, in turn, being leaned on uh, by the globalist that Russell Brand publicly exposes? Well, it turns out a sitting English Member of Parliament, uh, Dame Caroline Dinenage, which is a strange name, uh, or the Baroness Lancaster of Kim Bolton, uh, as I'm sure she'd much rather be known, uh, has been frantically dashing off letters to social media sites, mainstream media editors and journalists, uh, more or less stating, that's a lovely shiny media outlet you got there, mister. A shame if something unfortunate should happen to it. So YouTube, having been threatened, uh, willingly buckled. Rumble Video admir admirably told her to take a hike. And GB News, well, they sort of instructed their in-house weasel, uh, Andrew Tory Boy Pierce, uh, to savage the ankles of Beverly Turner live on air uh, because she failed to tow the uh, brand is guilty line. And Pierce, predictably enough, parroted the globalist narrative over COVID, of course, and continues to do so over brand. And the usual suspects have all risen up to play down accusations of government interference in the media with regard to brand. Dame Dininage is not a minister, they say. She's merely the chairwoman of the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee and thus lacks the governmental power to influence the behaviour of the media outlets, they say. Well, this isn't actually true. Her, her Select Committee oversees the government's ministerial department for Culture, Media and Sport, or DCMS, uh, which in turn oversees Ofcom, which is tasked, of course, with ensuring the media does exactly as it is told. And the DCMS is also home to the government's counter-disinformation unit, which was rather conveniently set up in early March 2020 uh, to combat claimed misinformation about COVID-19. It's a propaganda outfit, basically, with a remit to shut down anyone, uh, which includes Nobel Prize winning scientists, uh, who refuse to accept that politicians routinely lie about matters of great importance. And the present CEO of Ofcom is Dame Melanie Dawes, another dame. Dames everywhere. Uh, she was engineered into place in February 2020, uh, just before the great Covid terror struck. Again, awfully convenient, it has to be said. And this dame has already ousted Mark Stein from GB News and has got another five journos from the same organisation in her crosshairs, including Beverly Turner. So what was Stein's terrible crime? Why did, uh, why did Ofcom's Dame Dawes demand his head? It's simply because he gave voice to the injured and bereaved about who I can say no more than that on YouTube. I can only reiterate Dame Melanie Dawes became Ofcom's head honcho S just three weeks before the British government declared the COVID emergency uh, in lockstep with the rest of the world. After which, the Ofcom-controlled media went into a Pravda-esque lockstep too. Dame Dawes, you will not be surprised to hear, is a member of the incredibly powerful and influential World Economic Forum, uh, which seeks to inflict a, a revolutionary dictatorship on the world. And Klaus Schwab, the Blofeld-esque leader of the W. WEF has publicly boasted about infiltrating the governments of the West, and Dame Melanie Dawes and Ofcom are the result. So Mark Stein, incidentally, is one of the wisest men on this planet. He's also one of the kindest and one of the bravest, and taken all together, Stein is the wisest, kindest and bravest man on the planet, yet he's an enemy of the British government, which tells us all we 
need to know, really, and it gets worse. Dame Dininage was the government minister uh, initially responsible for the online safety bill, uh, which now awaits uh, just royal assent. And this bill essentially gives even more power to Ofcom with which to silence public dissent. And as the disgusting Times newspaper recently noted, the online safety bill will very likely be used to shut down Rumble's video channel in Britain uh, if its Canadian management refuses to debrand brand. And worse again, under the genuinely totalitarian online safety bill, it's now legally feasible for Rumble's executives, if they visit England, uh, to be arrested, to be actually arrested if they continue uh, to defy Ofcom's demand to banish brand. Dame Dinenage is no friend of democracy, that's for sure, but nor is her delightful husband, it would appear. Mark Lancaster, or Baron Lancaster of Kimbolton, as I'm sure he'd much rather be known too, uh, was Deputy Commander Colonel Lancaster of Britain's shameful 77th Brigade from 2018 uh, to July 2020. And for those unaware of this Stasi-esque military nudge unit, the 77th Brigade, uh, was tasked with silencing any opinion running counter to the government narrative uh, during Covid. And somewhat ironically, the revolting Daily Telegraph had the the jaw-dropping temerity to report on this in a sort of grandstanding, moralising manner, uh, when it seems highly likely the newspaper itself uh, had just as many 77th Brigade apparatchiks uh, infesting the comment sections of every DT article on COVID uh, as they do today on each and every DT article about the curious war in Ukraine. And the Daily Telegraph, by the way, received multi-million pound grants from uh, Bill Gates uh, between 2018 to 2022. Uh, but I'm going off track. Back to Brand. England's Attorney General is a Conservative MP called Victoria Prentice, who astonishingly is not actually a dame, although I'm sure she soon will be. And Prentice recently issued a warning to the media, uh, actually to everyone living in England and Wales, uh, suggesting those writing or talking about Brand could find themselves open to a contempt of court charge. And she made no such government-backed threats to Channel 4 or the Times newspaper, though, uh, intimating it's fine and dandy for the media to act as the, the accuser, the judge, the jury and the executioner of Brand, uh, but definitely not fine and dandy uh, to impartially defend him. Now, this is the action of an undemocratic tyrant, because she's quite literally uh, going beyond the boundaries of law itself. Contempt of court can only take place following the arrest and intended prosecution of a criminal defendant. A brand has not been arrested. Therefore, uh, Victoria Prentice is using her position as Attorney General uh, to illegally influence the media. She's a barrister, her husband is a judge, she clearly knows the law and she clearly knows her actions go beyond the law. But she carries on regardless, and the muzzled media say nothing, and nor do her fellow Conservative politicians. The allegations against Brand coincided with the passing of the online safety bill. Of course, this is no coincidence. The globalist agenda is built on lies. Anyone exposing those lies will be taken down, as we're now witnessing with Russell Brand. And the most chilling aspect here is that England's Attorney General, Ofcom and the Conservative government and the entire mainstream media are treacherously demolishing and subverting hundreds of years of English common law to silence opposition to the global agenda and they're doing it in cahoots with the World Economic Forum. This is not good.